for power came out from him and healed all of them. Then he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Blessed are you who are poor, who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Before we talk about these words, it is helpful to go through the who, what, when, and where. Who are these words of Jesus for? Luke's gospel tells us that Jesus looked up at the disciples In the Greek, it's an idiomatic phrase like, lift up the eyeballs, looks at them decisively and sees them. He looks at them and sees them, and who are they? They are not just the 12, the most famous ones that Jesus selected. The gospel tells us they were a bunch of people that gathered from the countryside as well to follow Jesus. When Jesus looks at them, he would see them in their poverty. And when most people lived on subsistence level agriculture and were vulnerable to famine, preyed upon by overlords, Jesus is looking at them and sees them. He doesn't look past them because they're too lowly. He doesn't look away from them because they're too shameful. He doesn't look above them to somebody more important. He looks at them and says, blessed are you who are poor for yours is the kingdom of God. That's who Jesus speaks to. And what then is happening? What happens is that the disciples feel themselves seen by Jesus, and they move up close to him, and as Luke's gospel says, there's power going out from Jesus. People are experiencing healing, and it says that those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. That's what is happening. We've got the who, and now we've got the what. And we can wonder about what the unclean spirits might be, but the word in Greek gives us a clue. It's only used one other time in the New Testament. So there's trouble because of unclean spirits here. And the only other time this same word appears in the whole Bible, it says, let there not be any bitter roots grow up among you or in you, that causes you to trouble, that causes trouble for you. It's in the book of Hebrews. There is power with Jesus when he sees you in your situation as it is, and things begin to move. There's power with being seen by Jesus. Where there are bitter roots on things that hold on to you or things that you hold on to, they begin to move with Jesus. And people feel healing. There's power with being seen as you actually are. That's the who and that's the what. And the when and the where. Luke's gospel tells us that before Jesus goes down and announces these words, he spent the night in prayer in the full presence of God alone. And he goes down from that mountain into a level open, broad, wide open, accessible place. This is Luke's sermon on the plain. In such an open place, people who are usually divided by their work or by their location, by their age, by their gender, by their color, by their culture, 
people who are divided by all kinds of reasons in their regular life, they can gather as this great crowd and all of them are seen in all their differences with their hurts, with their needs. Jesus sees them all. And in that open and broad place where people are seen, the kingdom of God can take place. The kingdom of God can take place when Jesus sees you, and the kingdom of God can displace and take the place of all the petty, small, restrictive, little kingdoms that we make for ourselves, that others make for us, that we put ourselves and other people in. This is what happens when Jesus sees the disciples in the Bible and for us now. That all the ways that you would restrict and negate yourself Jesus sees that too and frees you and opens you up to take your place in the kingdom of God. The who, the what, the when and the where. The open level place is the where. So now we can talk about the words, blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. The trouble and the challenge for all of us here in the United States in the 21st century in Oak Park, to be honest with ourselves, we aren't the poor in any way that Jesus would have seen for the peasants scattered from the countryside in the level place. And Jesus has other words for those who are well off and for the comfortable. Woe to you who are rich, and woe to you who are full, and woe to you who are laughing. There's no way to dodge the offensiveness of these words or to avoid the fact that you and I could be among the ones that Jesus targets with them. If the blessings and the power of Jesus' words for the poor are that he sees them as they actually are and helps them feel that they come alive in his presence in the kingdom of God, then the power for the rich is that they too are seen. And what's seen is the power of wealth. That there is a power in money, there's a power in wealth that can hold on to us and keep us back from taking our place in the kingdom of God with everyone else. Jesus' words are also invitations for the wealthy that they would hear it. Blessed are you who are poor and woe to you who are rich now that they would be brought into motion, but it is offensive and it hurts. Luke's gospel is the most offensive book in the New Testament about the wealthy and most outspoken about poverty. But it's also a gospel that includes the specific names of people that you will remember that only appear here who are wealthy and they are the ones whom Jesus calls so that the good news of the kingdom of God comes home to Zacchaeus. And there's women that only get named in Luke's gospel, Joanna and Susanna, that it says they followed Jesus and they, out of the resources they had, they were able to share with others. Joanna was the wife of the steward of Herod. And so, on the one hand, Jesus is so outspoken about the power of wealth and the danger of wealth in Luke's gospel, but the words also are for the wealthy, to join in the movement and to come with Jesus. They don't need to exclude wealth and possessions, but they don't belong in isolation. They don't belong hoarded up. They don't belong sequestered. Jesus directs his words to the wealthy to draw them and what they have onto that plane with everyone else, where the needs are seen, where the hurt is known, and the blessings may flow and the power in money may become opened up and shared. At the seminary, I once attended a workshop that was about faith and finances and money and ministry. I thought the first thing we would do would be look at balance sheets and help understand them, help us understand them. But the facilitator of the workshop invited all of us, the students, to get up from our desks and to come close to one another in a circle in that sort of open level place. And the first thing we did was that the facilitator wanted each of us to tell a story that would give the who, what, when, and where 
of why we became to be stressed or afraid or fearful of money. How that power that money had came into our own lives personally. Each of us had a turn to talk about how we felt stressed, fearful, or ashamed because of money in our lives. And everybody had a different story and a different angle and a different experience, but all of us had it in common that there's a lot that is unnamed, that goes hidden about our relationship with money, that, that is between us and God, and it's, sometimes it's not even open to ourselves what it is. But there in that room, we felt the experience just among us that everybody has this and we're often silent and ashamed of what it means for us. But there in that room, the kingdom of God was coming into being, the level place where everybody is seen. And the facilitator wanted us to make the connection with who we are as congregations. That as the people of God, we are that kingdom of God when we take our place with one another to help bear each other's burdens, to help our feelings of fear and shame and stress be seen, to trust that God has a place for us, that where we need encouragement and help and support, it may become known. We have a place in the kingdom of God, and the worth and the value of a congregation is in what it does that no other community can do be a place for the kingdom of God to take root, to displace the roots of bitterness, to displace all the other petty kingdoms that would take hold in our lives. And one place that all of us have some relationship with in all different ways is, is, the, is the way of money. And so Luke's words, blessed are you who are poor and blessed are you who are hungry and blessed are you who weep now, They aren't to be kept in isolation as just beautiful thoughts about the poor in the abstract. They're meant to move us. They're meant to take root in us so that Jesus sees you and me. And Jesus' words, which we will remember also with his own body and blood given for us, is that we have a place in the level place of the kingdom of God.